What exactly do attorneys look for when hiring a paralegal? Or what is it that makes an attorney want to work with one paralegal over another? So I asked them. Whether you're new to the paralegal profession or if you've been in it for a while and you're thinking about putting yourself out there to look for other job opportunities, I think you'll get a ton of value from this. Before we jump in, though, I should give you an idea of who I asked and where these answers come from. Let me start by saying that this wasn't easy getting answers at first because it's a pretty open-ended question, and most attorneys don't like open-ended questions, especially litigation attorneys. And six out of 10 were litigation attorneys. Two others were in-house doing corporate and transactional law. One was in family law and the other one was in real estate. So at first, I'd ask the question, what do you look for in a paralegal? And there was silence. I decided a better approach would be to give them my top three and ask if they agreed and if they had anything to add. That was much better. So I'm going to start with just the general statement and then give you what I'll call taking it to the next level with a pro tip or pro quote from an attorney on that topic. And stick around to the end because I also want to give you some actionable strategies. And in this case, the actionable strategy is, well, okay, Anne, we've got the list of things they're looking for. And I have those qualities or those skills, but how do I show them or prove to them that that's what they're looking for, that I have it. All right, so first is attention to detail. Having a high level of attention to detail is more than just good proofreading skills. As a paralegal, this skill includes focusing on the minute details while also looking at the big picture. All of this while meeting strict deadlines usually set by a judge, a court rule, or a regulation. Just like your other skills, attention to detail is a skill that you can continually improve. I just did a live presentation at a law firm last week on this topic. Trust me, this is a skill that you can improve. I know a lot of people think you're either born with a high level of attention to detail or you're not. That's not the case. There are most definitely things you can do to improve your attention to detail. So here's a pro tip from one of the attorneys. Attorneys are not the grammar police. They're not doing that final review to find errors in headings and case captions or the misuse of pronouns or grammar. Attorneys are doing that final review for substance and to make sure the document or thing makes the legal argument that they're trying to put forward to either the court, the client, or to opposing counsel. All right, next up, number two, problem solving. A problem solver is someone who focuses on the problem as stated and tries to synthesize information and knowledge to be able to achieve a solution. Compare that to someone who simply recognizes that a problem exists and reports the problem to the attorney in charge for them to solve. The problem solver paralegal recognizes a problem and comes up with one or two possible action steps to take to solve the problem and then approaches the attorney with the problem and the proposed solution or solutions. In fact, I did an entire podcast episode on this topic. It was uh, episode number 15. I'll put a link below. So here's the pro tip from an attorney. Before coming into my office with a problem, research the proposed solution and know the answers to at least some of the basic questions I'm likely to ask you regarding the problem and the solution. How did this happen? When will it get fixed? What is the cost of your proposed solution? Next up, three, technology. Paralegals who have an advanced level of technology skills used to have a competitive advantage in the legal profession. Now it's a requirement. There's no way around it. Technology is never going away and never standing still. This requires more than just your basic word processing applications. Working in the legal profession means having a good working knowledge of many different technologies, including law firm billing software, video conferencing software, applications that work with scanners, printers, and copy machines, docketing software, digital filing applications, online research tools, document management systems, online systems for clerks of court, 
that's just the tip of the iceberg if you want to have a successful paralegal career. As a paralegal, you'll also be required to have an advanced skill set in practice-specific technology. In litigation, it would be things such as e-discovery tools, trial technology, and applications that increase the efficiency of the legal team. So here was a pro tip from an attorney. Be the go-to person for my technology team. Even though we have an IT department, they don't always know the ins and outs of our team's technology. That's what I expect from our paralegals. Yeah. Okay, number four, proactive mindset. To some new paralegals, being proactive might sound like you're being asked to read an attorney's mind. The lawyer will not expect you to read her or his mind, but she is probably looking for someone who's good at anticipating the needs of the file, the case, the transaction. A paralegal with a proactive mindset prioritizes so that they're done, they've already done what the lawyer needs before they ask for it. You seek out work rather than waiting for the lawyer to hand it to you. You can tell when the lawyer is starting to become overwhelmed and you know when to step in. In short, you think ahead. The only way to be able to think ahead is to know your cases, your transactions, your files, like the back of your hand. You must come up with a game plan on how you're going to keep up with everything that's going on in all of your files. Doing so is going to allow you to know what the attorney needs well in advance of a deadline. Here was a pro tip from the attorney. I am never going to complain that my paralegal is being too proactive in getting to know either the file, the facts of the case, or the details of the transaction. Some of the best paralegals I've worked with have been the ones who walk into my office a week before something is due, and they tell me they've already started drafting it. Okay, next up, number five, professionalism and accountability. As a paralegal working under the direct supervision of an attorney, you are a representation of that attorney and your law firm. In addition to having a basic code of professional conduct, there's also a certain level of professionalism that's expected of you, both at the office and outside the office. This also means, to me, staying away from bad apples, aka the office gossip crew, because attorneys and management know who they are. Even if you aren't the one doing the gossiping or complaining, associating them is going to lower your perceived level of professionalism within the organization. Also, these same lines, accountability, attorneys don't like to have their staff members blaming other staff members when something goes wrong or making excuses. They really just want the project or the thing done so that they can move on to the next thing. Here was a pro tip from the attorney. It doesn't really matter whose fault it is when something goes wrong. All that matters is that we fix it and we try to make sure it doesn't happen again. It's no fun to have someone in your office saying it's HR's fault or it's the associate's fault. They got the draft to me late or the previous paralegal on the file messed it up. Okay, number six, time management. You hear me talk about this a lot. If you listen to the podcast, YouTube, any of my courses, that's because proper time management skills are crucial to a paralegal success. If you can't effectively manage your tasks, you risk producing poor quality work. And that's gonna be due to stress and then rushing to get the projects done. There's a quote that I like. I wish I knew who to credit it to because I've been saying it for so long, I can just say it off the top of my head. And it's about time management. When you're focused on rushing to meet a deadline, your focus ends up being on getting the project done on time instead of getting it done right. Think about that. You're a litigation paralegal and that brief has to be e-filed before midnight. It's 11.55 p.m. Are you going back through it to give it one last quality control check or are you stressed trying to log into that e-filing portal while you're watching the clock tick down the minutes? I could spend an entire episode here on just time management. It's one of the things that I teach in our Billable Hour Bootcamp. And I think I'm going to do a separate episode here on some time management tips for you. 
So here was the pro tip from the attorney. Most attorneys are not good at managing their time at all. So don't follow their example. They need a paralegal who's good at time management so that they can follow your example. And this attorney went on to say, I 100% rely on my paralegal to keep our team's deadlines on track. They let me know when deadlines are getting too close for comfort. If you've ever been on the receiving end of a judge's tongue lashing or asking for an extension of time, you'd know why this is so important. Okay, so number seven, research skills. Most paralegal certificate programs include at least a class or two on legal research skills that teach students how to find and cite case law and regulations. The problem is not every paralegal student lands a paralegal position as a litigation paralegal. Having great research skills is about more than just jumping onto Lexis or Westlaw to find a relevant case. Paralegals in all practice areas use their research skills to help attorneys solve problems every day. For example, a corporate paralegal might be asked to do some due diligence on foreign corporations that are part of a big merger. A real estate paralegal might be asked to do title research on a big commercial closing transaction. Additionally, paralegal skills now include being able to find information on social media sites and other internet sites. Once you find the information, then you analyze it to determine if that research leads you to other key information. Here's a pro tip from an attorney. A paralegal with excellent research skills does not stop their research once they find the answer that they thought they were looking for. Instead, they take it two or three steps deeper because there could be answers out there waiting for them, other answers. Okay, eight is a positive attitude. Okay, so this one surprised me coming from attorneys. It shouldn't surprise me, but I have to admit it kind of did, especially that it came in the top 10. I think it says a lot about where we're at now in the world and our workplace that attorneys place an importance on working with people with a positive attitude. So a pro tip from the attorney was, I don't need a paralegal who's happy-go-lucky 24-7, but after many years of working with a paralegal, I choose to work with ones with a positive attitude and less skills than the other way around. It's just not pleasant to have to work with someone who's constantly complaining about everyone and everything. And this one went on to say, life is too short to be unhappy like that and to force other people around you to absorb that negative energy. It's pretty big. All right, number nine, communication skills. You knew I was headed here. <laughs> communication skills are fundamental to a paralegal's career. Paralegals spend more than 75% of their day communicating in some way or another with others, either verbal communication or written communication. A typical day for a paralegal could include all of the following in just one seven or eight hour day, calling vendors about pending legal projects, interviewing clients, interviewing witnesses, attending meetings by video, phone, in person. Those meetings could be with colleagues, opposing counsel, vendors, others, uh, responding to written communication internally and externally, drafting legal documents, telephone calls with expert witnesses and court personnel. Writing is one of the most important skills that any paralegal can have. You're gonna be doing a lot of writing, not just when communicating with clients, but also when communicating with opposing counsel, outside vendors and your attorneys. A lack of good writing skills can be detrimental to a paralegal's career. For some quick tips, I did a podcast episode titled A Refresher on the Seven C's of Communication Skills. Go ahead and listen to that if you have the time. Now, here was the pro tip from an attorney. The attorney said, there's no way around it in the legal profession. You have to have good writing skills. Just like your other skills, this is something that you can improve. So it's, you know, if it's something that you struggle with, they would strongly encourage you to take some courses and get better at it.
it's never going to be something that just goes away that you won't need to worry about. In the meantime, get an app like Grammarly to help you see where your errors are and how to improve your writing. And last but not least, number 10, organizational skills. A paralegal's organizational skills have a direct impact on their productivity and also the productivity of their attorneys. If it takes you twice as long to find something as it should, that can have a negative impact on your work in so many ways. Good organizational skills are more than just the ability to index, sort, and categorize documents. For paralegals, this skill includes the ability to look at the big picture and to plan how and when things are going to be needed so that you can choose the best method for organizing your cases, your transactions, your things. This is a huge asset, you know, when it comes to organizational skills, because it's the use of technology applications that will also lead the way to paralegals helping to keep their attorneys organized. So the pro tip from the attorney was, it's very important to work with a paralegal who has a good organizational skill. I don't want to walk into their office and see a mess, wondering, are my binders buried somewhere under that mess? And the attorney went on to say, do I have good organizational skills? No. That's why I hire paralegals who do. So those are our top 10 things that attorneys say they're looking for in paralegals. I'd love to hear your comments. Those were very general things that apply to all practice areas. We could get more specific and do top 10 for litigation, top 10 for real estate. I mean, we, we could go on and on, but I think these are good because these are 10 things that would apply to all paralegals, regardless of your skill level, the practice area that you work in, your years of experience. These are just 10 things to keep in mind. And so now what do you do when you have to be able to show the attorneys that you have those skills or maybe prove it to them in an interview. Don't just list out these 10 things in bullet points. Be able to give them a story for particularly the ones that you want to focus on. Let's say that you say that you have all 10 of those top things that attorneys are looking for. Well, it's okay to say it, but be prepared to give examples like specific stories what has happened recently, and it doesn't have to be as a paralegal, what has happened recently in your career or as at your stay-at-home career that shows that you have good organizational skills? How do you organize your household? What can you give as an example of something that, um, you know, you stay away from the negativity, that you don't blame others? So the actionable strategy for me I would take all 10 of those things and I would find a story. I would write a story for all 10 of those things and be prepared to talk to them about it. You won't have to talk about all 10 and give examples and stories for all 10, but I'm sure that you have a story or two to give specific case examples. And when I say case, I don't mean litigation. I mean, you know, case studies or a specific example from your work or your personal life that shows you have those things they're looking for.